Welcome to First Mover, your first global look at today's action in the Bitcoin, blockchain, and digital asset space. Welcome to Community Crypto on Coindesk TV. You're watching The Hash on Coindesk TV. Welcome to Money Reimagined. This is new money. This is all about Bitcoin. This is NFT All-Stars. Biden's 1.9 trillion COVID relief bill uh, may be headed toward the Senate. I mean, how will this impact the crypto markets? I, I feel like all of those scenarios are kind of priced in. Maybe it's a little higher. I think there are reasons why the price of Bitcoin is rising so fast and why companies are replacing, you know, dollar holdings with Bitcoin holdings. So just this morning, Christine, I looked at the money supply. So did you know that the money supply in the United States since the coronavirus pandemic started is up 25 percent? I became I became interested in Bitcoin um, when I became concerned about the compilation of debt uh, that uh, we're uh, doing and racking up in the Congress. And currently, we're going to add uh, another 1.9 trillion uh, to the debt. MicroStrategy today announced that they were putting another billion dollars into Bitcoin, while yesterday on its earnings call, Square announced that it was putting 170 million into another buy. It's not irresponsible for any corporate executive to convert a weaker asset into a stronger asset. It's not irresponsible to avoid burning 25% of your shareholders' money every year. And for somebody like Elon Musk, who knows that there's a market impact to manipulate, first take an individual position to Bitcoin, pump the price up, and then say that Tesla has invested and Tesla doesn't make money yet, it's also irresponsible and it's market manipulation. I think that being disappointed in Elon Musk is a just punishment for caring about what he said in the first place. Um, but clearly he's not, you know, a cryptocurrency expert and it's, it's not his forte. He seems to be having a lot of fun trolling um, a, a lot of people on Twitter. And I think, you know, getting wrinkled about that is, is kind of your problem. I just became a millionaire by spending all my money on Dogecoin. YOLO! I don't know even that Dogecoin would fit within the SEC's ambit, um, you know, depending on whether or not one would consider purchases purchases and sales to be securities purchases and sales, but don't come complaining to the government if you lose your money. I think meme coins should definitely be taken seriously. I mean, first, on the most basic level, there is real money behind them. So this is not fake money, this is real money. And as our, you know, uh, our, our guests can talk about, people can actually make millions off of these coins, right? So they are serious on that level. But I think, you know, this show is called Community Crypto, and this is about community-driven investment. And I think that's a really interesting and important phenomenon. And, you know, these meme points are great examples of that. Coinbase will have competition, has competition, and that competition will increase. But I also think that Coinbase is now going to be able to effectively compete with um, not just you know, the other crypto companies, but, but you know, the Wells Fargo's and the JP Morgan's of the world. And, and that's just a, a much, much bigger, bigger market. Coin stock goes live on NASDAQ. What they did was a voluntary earnings call where they shared their latest numbers and they dropped some large numbers on the world. You know, JP Morgan's coming on board. Morgan Stanley already uh, announced one. Wells Fargo just announced one. And slowly but surely, there'll be more and more people in the system, a result of which is going to push up the price. SNL is covering NFTs. What does that what does that guys tell you? Are NFTs going more mainstream or is this the uh, signal of a bubble? I think that NFTs are really such an interesting gateway into crypto. Like I keep thinking about all the waves people would get involved with crypto. I'm like the merchant adoption and uh, all of the remittances and all of these things that never really happened. And then suddenly you get like artwork and all these artists artists pile on. Just because there is NFTs doesn't mean that you're gonna slap some pretty piece of art on there and then you're Michelangelo. There's a lot of work that goes into actually even having a chance to succeed. I think it's a bubble. I do think there is a bubble and I think um, where we are at in that bubble or, or if it's not a bubble now, I do believe it probably will be a bubble at some point because there's just so many people rushing into the space. Studios sometimes force feed you contact like there there is a world where you you don't you have your options are oddly limited where they they try to predict what it is that you're going to like and so you kind of get like these seven options and that is what you get and so we're trying to 
I guess, find a model where we're going to allow by people being able to purchase the NFTs to dictate what they want to watch. The People's Bank of China announced that virtual currency related business activities are legal. So on that news, of course, we have Bitcoin dumping 4% and a whole lot of red across the broader market. So I think OTC platforms that are operated from the big exchanges, the Huobi and so on, and Binance, they will they will close down. They will stop offering their services to the Chinese uh, mainline users. I'm wondering where where will they go? Uh, a lot of the hash rate migrated to other parts of the world, uh, like Central Asia and Kazakhstan and parts of North America. Uh, there was some hash rate that stayed behind, and that has once again been cracked down and shut off again. We were thinking of building Bitcoin City. Bitcoin is now legal tender in El Salvador, a world first just three months after the Bitcoin law passed the country's legislature. We are very enthusiastic as a government and President Bukele leadership. And they're afraid and they're concerned because if we succeed, as I said, a lot of uh, uh, countries are looking at us and they will follow you know, our leadership. So we're going to dive into what's going on with Apple and I've always been, you know, the, the torchbearer for privacy and promoting great policies. At the start of the year, they promoted something that would stop apps tracking you on their devices. They copped a lot of flack from especially companies like Facebook, who said this is going to a real business model, and it seems that they have now actually walked that back substantially. I think this is supposed to be a family-friendly show, so I'll just say this is BS. <laughs> um, I, I, it's 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 incredibly disappointing, and you know, you mentioned Facebook revenues. Just to for people who haven't been paying attention, we actually did see huge hits to Facebook and Snapchat and a few other tracking companies' revenues after uh, iPhones made this change. So you can only assume that. Uh, that Cook is getting some pushback from his buddies in Silicon Valley and that this was something of a product of that. What about Bitcoin ETFs? That's still something that has not been approved in the United States. Ready for an integrated product. People are looking for ways through our regulated securities markets to access Bitcoin. I don't see it getting resolved. I don't see the first ETF coming until we have the regulatory environment to approve it and also we've solved the ESG issue. From our seat, we're certainly wanting to be ready and willing to engage in creating an ETF when regulatory approvals um, you know, start, to, start to pop up. Breaking news, folks. Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, hitting a new all-time high above $66,000. Futures, in fact, we think are, in, if anything, a better place for price discovery. The regulatory aspect and the ETF wrapper make it a very compelling alternative. Well, we filed a Freedom of Information Act request, and we got something like 230 pages worth of internal documents from the Trump administration regarding its crypto policy. Sometimes you file a FOIA and it works. We've had this impression that the you know, Trump administration was relatively you know, light touch on crypto. And to me, these emails kind of maybe cement that because there were a lot of emails where you had people you know, either requesting to speak with someone at the Treasury Department or specifically with Steven Mnuchin. And a lot of these emails, you know, we got uh, internal records where uh, staffers were saying, yeah, you know, we don't think that this person needs to be able to speak with someone at Treasury or, you know, let's throw this to, you know, such and such deputy. I have to say, I thought it was kind of funny that Jared Kushner was the one who first brought stable coins to the attention of the administration. He's not the guy I would have expected to have started that whole email train of, hey, we should look into stable coins. There hasn't been platforms created by people of color for people of color. The fact that you're making that available to everybody yeah. through what you're doing, I don't even think we realize the magnitude of that. We're trying to remove intermediaries and that's kind of what we see as the premise in crypto in general, especially Bitcoin. I got into Bitcoin as a joke in 2016. I copped two Bitcoins for like 600 bucks. Or no, I hate you. <laughs> maybe, maybe three for like, yeah, like 600. And I, I actually lost my password to my Coinbase. 
I've been in this space for four years, flying around the world, trying to explain to people what NFTs are and what it means to collect them. And honestly, I'm not even sure I know, but today we've got a bunch of sharp folks on and I'm really excited to hear what you guys think. Like, what is an NFT to you and what does it even mean to, to, to own an NFT or to collect one? Non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible is a term to describe things that can't be exchanged one for one with each other. We like it. We w And those songs are more special because we feel like we earn them with our clapping. So an NFT is sort of like clapping for an encore, but it might be something else. Hi, I'm Christine Lee. Zach Seward. I'm Michael Casey. I'm Christy Harkin. I'm Isaiah Jackson. I'm Serena Lynn. Hey, this is Will Fox Lee. I'm Teresa Santos. Hi, I'm Lawrence Lewinson. Hi, I'm Dorian Wayne. I'm Nicola Stey. Hi, I'm Kevin Worth. My name is Naomi Bruckwell. I'm Jordan Muthra. Hi, I'm Galen Moore. Hi, I'm Brad Count. I'm Pete Paschal. Hi, I'm Jensen Assey. You're watching. And you are watching. And you're watching Coindesk TV.